Today on the show, I'm happy to have Amit Mate. He's the founder of GMAC Intelligence. They build the world's best AI ML software for robots and other consumer electronics. And you actually went on a wild goose chase into AI. So how did this journey begin? Hey, Chad. Thanks for calling on the show. Uh, I've been listening to your podcast and I'm really honored and interested to be here and talk about this journey. So yeah, as, as I was mentioning earlier, I, um, I, I was like any other graduate student trying to figure out what to do in life. And I came across this article in a magazine. This was like mid-90s, 97, 98, time frame. And this was about cellular technology and uh, the ability of cellular technology to do voice and data in a mobile fashion, being unshackled from your desk and anywhere, anytime, access to information, access to your near and dear ones. I was just fascinated. And uh, I said, you know what, I, I need to understand how this technology works. And I could see like a 20, 30 year roadmap going from pure voice calls to data to video and all of that. And so I started off my journey at Nokia Research in Finland. And so I got an offer from Nokia Research to work on the wireless 3G technology they were building at that time. And I'd spent most of my life in India and because big change, cultural change, as well as climate change and learning about how to build wireless technology. That was fun. And eventually, like, as I said, I went on a wild goose chase to understand this behemoth of wireless, right? There are so many parts. There is handset, there is the base station, there are operators, uh, the people are who write applications. And so it took me almost 15, 20 years to explore the whole space of wireless, starting off with doing system simulations, standardization patterns for wireless. Then moving on to the Bay Area, doing a startup where we take some of these pre-built components and built a Wi-Fi integration solution wherein you could use a SIM card to access any public Wi-Fi. And, and so from there, I went to a company called Huawei, which is a Chinese company. I spent a couple of years with them. I used to often go to Beijing, Shanghai as well to see how these technologies are built. And then again, I moved out of there and went to a East Coast startup in Boston area. We built the US Americans, America's first 3G infrastructure, which was deployed at Verizon and Sprint. That was the first time iPhone was getting introduced and iPhone uses that technology. And that journey led me to Qualcomm. Qualcomm was really the the powerhouse which was powering all these uh, technologies and I spent the next decade at Qualcomm Research building 4G technology and eventually started dabbling with some AI algorithms like optimization algorithms which is the heart of modern machine learning training and at the chipsets the smartphone chipsets they were trying to build enough intelligence on your smartphone so that all your pictures and videos become beautiful in real time using AI and I realized that there is so much capacity on these small chips. They could be easily repurposed, for example, to build a facial recognition system, which could cost a few hundred dollars. And there wouldn't be any issue about privacy because all of the runs of the device is owned by an end person. Yeah, and, and, so, and so on and so forth. That journey led to building this company, GMAC, where our focus is to build connected intelligence solutions for the masses. What were some of the biggest takeaways from almost having a decade at Qualcomm? Yeah, Qualcomm was an awesome place. And, and my first experience at Qualcomm was I landed on one of the, their wireless base station products. This is the same chip that goes into Verizon and prints networks. And it was an amazing experience, like how much people could achieve with such a, a small team, even though it was a big company. So it was almost operating like a big startup. And essentially it operated like a well-oiled machine, wherein all parts of the machine knew exactly what they were good at, what they wanted to do. And people valued uh, all this difference of skill set, which we were bringing together to the project. Like building a wireless technology is not uh, an easy job. You need people who understand algorithms, people who can build software, and people who can put all the algorithms into a hardware chipset. You need to be good at designing chips. You also need people who are very passionate about testing this. Imagine one flips while you're doing a banking transaction and that goes, that means you're losing money in your bank. It creates havoc, right? And so people are passionate about quality. And so I, that's what I learned when you have so many of these passionate people, experts in different fields coming together, you can create products which are truly worthless.
And so is that a big part of what you do today is trying to assemble a strong team within your company? Yeah, that definitely is something, uh, I wouldn't say a major part, but that is the base I feel of finding out people who are passionate, finding out people who work well with others and finding out people who are ready to push the border weight. Take those. Are you glad you made the jump into entrepreneurship? Yeah, no, definitely. I think it was always on the cards. Like I, I was always fascinated and the re- that's the reason I always work between big companies and small companies. I started off my journey at Nokia. Then I worked at a West Coast startup, a East Coast startup, then went back to Qualcomm. And then uh, I thought maybe now is the time to do my own startup. The timing was right. We were at the beginning of a Moore's Law equivalent uh, in AI or Edge AI. Like at the compute power doubled every two years or one and a half years. And we're seeing a similar phenomena on intelligence, right? A compute or AI or intelligence is doubling every few months these days on edge devices. And so that's really the wave that we want to catch on to and, and build useful products for the masses uh, through the startup. Yeah. What's the core product right now? So uh, the main product that we have is called QSR Bot. Essentially, it's a drive-through automation solution. And uh, so imagine uh, there's a small box or AI box, which costs a few hundred dollars and you slide into a drive-through in a quick serve restaurant. And you connect the existing speaker, mic, cameras, and the point of sale billing system like Square or Posist to this box. And then the box with the help of visual AI, it can identify repeat customers with the help of speech AI, natural language processing. It can extract the order from what you said, and then it hands off to the billing. And then it can hand a bunch, handle a bunch of other workflows, customer feedback and handling coupons and stuff like that. So that's really the main product we have. How long did it take to develop this one? An interesting question. So when we started the company about two, three years ago, our focus was selling into solution like facial recognition, license plate recognition, uh, human activity recognition. And at that time we were trialing in India, we were using India as a sandbox and kind of sold it to small, medium businesses there because they wanted AI, but they didn't have the, the price point, which could make uh, the U S products affordable to them. So we built like a low cost one, but then about like little lower 11 months ago, I shifted to the U S and I wanted to focus, I shifted back to the U S I should say from the India market. And uh, we're trying to repurpose what we had built and tested in India to see where the problem is in, in, in the U.S. And so this drive-through automation came out because labor and shortage in the quick serve industry is a big problem. And we could use what we built like license plate recognition or repeat recognition modules and repurpose it for this drive through So you could say it's just 11 months since the product has been conceptualized, but the components have been in the works for about two to three years now. So if one of our listeners wanted to get in touch with your company or yourself, mm-hmm. how can they do so? They can connect with me on my LinkedIn page and we can connect through that. They know my name. I think the search, the Mac intelligence, I'm always happy to respond to queries on LinkedIn. Thank you, Amit, for coming on the show. And thank you everybody for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. Make sure to leave the show a five-star review. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki, and we'll see you next time.